am back from my 30 day social media detox. Did you miss me? <laughs> just kidding. Um, but really, I just wanted to give you guys a little rundown of the past 30 days. What I noticed about things, what I've been doing, the positives, the little negatives that I found along the way, the things I missed about social media, the things I... So I just wanted to give you the things I missed, the things I didn't miss, the things I realized about myself and just my tendencies with social media, and yeah. So let's just get started. And if you want to skip to my conclusions and don't wanna read all the details, I'll put down right here what minute to skip to because <laughs> it might be a little long. Okay, so it all started out and I was feeling excited about it, kind of like, oh no, what did I get myself into? I'm gonna miss this. But I deleted all the apps off my phone because I realized if they were on there, it was gonna be way too tempting. Um, logged myself out of everything and said, okay, this is it, we're starting. No turning back now. <laughs> so the first things I realized, waking up in the morning, I didn't even realize it, but I guess I usually scroll through the feeds or check comments and everything or like the latest post I had posted on Instagram or my blog because I woke up and I was like, wow, like I guess I'm just gonna go make breakfast, make coffee and start my quiet time and read my devotional in my Bible. And it was just the most freeing thing ever. Like I didn't spend an extra 30 minutes scrolling through feeds, worrying about this or that or what I was gonna post that day or anything like that. I just did me. I did what was really healthy for my soul and just felt so free. So that first morning was great. Um, and then I, as I was walking to class, I realized, wow, I'm usually sitting here like Snapchatting like throughout my walk because it's like a 20 minute walk I'm usually Snapchatting through my walk. I'm usually doing anything and everything, post like t finding things to take photos of, to post like, and I just thought and like processed the day beforehand. I processed what probably was gonna happen this day. I prayed. There's just so many things that I did that I would have never normally made time for. Not to mention just making breakfast in general and just being able to eat it hot without trying to take a photo of it. That was nice too. So then I go and check my emails and I had received a few really sweet emails of people that were just saying, wow, good luck on the social media break, but I'm gonna miss you. Have so much fun, have some great time to yourself and can't wait till you come back. So that made me really just like smile and kind of just lighten my day because I was kind of thinking, wow, I'm gonna miss this. Like, how am I gonna do this? And those sweet emails, thank you to those of you who did send them because they were so sweet. So then things that I didn't expect to happen, happened. And in the first week of my social media detox, two of my close friends get engaged. One of them, I had to find out through text message because I wasn't on social media, so I didn't see any photos. And then the other close friend FaceTimes me, like when it all happened, showing me the ring and everything. And I was like, took a screenshot of like my face expression with her in the FaceTime. And I was like, I wanna post this so badly and just celebrate with her. And I wanted to celebrate with the other one, but it was, sad because I really wanted to celebrate them. I wanted to show everyone how much I was happy for them and wanted to post something about it and I couldn't. So in one week I was like, dang it, I really miss social media just because of like things like that and I wanna see all their photos that they probably are posting to Facebook and I can't do it. So that was definitely one of the downsides and made me think, I don't know if I can do this for another three weeks. But then it went only up from there. So another thing I realized is just driving. Um, I didn't think I checked my phone or my feeds or comments like while I was driving because that's mm, not the safe thing to do. But like the first time in my car, I like go and swipe my phone open 
And then I just stare at like an appless screen and I was like, well, there's nothing to do here and I close it again. I'm like, wow, how many times do I usually do that during my drive? Probably a lot, but like I had nothing to look at. So I just closed it and set it down and then just started looking at the scenery around me on the roads and started singing along to my music and just enjoying where I was in the moment. And it was so great and it was so freeing. All my car times and like my drives to CrossFit and stuff. Um, which brings up another thing, CrossFit. Like there's so many times I want to post something because I accomplished something really great or I made a PR and like my deadlift or accomplished one of the CrossFit open workouts and I couldn't post anything about it. I was so sad. But then I just realized, you know what? I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this to post about it. So this is cool. I'm doing something for myself. Which is another great thing is like I realized like sometimes I was doing things just to like post about them, like to be able to say like I did it. Um, and like one day, like I just had a lot of my mind and like I went out and like adventured out to trails that I didn't know existed and started going on hikes for like three hours. And usually I would have made sure to stop and take a photo and make sure that I could post something inspirational about my walk. And instead I just took the time to like genuinely seek out what was troubling me, like why I was so upset kind of talk it out with God and just figure it all out. So it was cool to just do something for me for once and not like make sure I went on like a hike and stuff to get a photo. So then in class, there was some good, some bad, a lot of good actually, because I didn't realize how much I scrolled through Pinterest or I checked my comments and stuff like that. And I took the best notes I ever did in my life, like I paid attention to the professors, I did everything and I felt so, like such a great student for once. I was like the only one not on my phone and I was like, wow, I'm so good. No, I'm not, I'm just completely kidding. Um, but I really did feel productive. Um, whether it be at home on my computer doing homework or in class, like I was so productive because I had nothing to distract me. Um, but there was things like giving my presentation on nighttime eating, the underwater weighing lab that we did, um, just all different kinds of labs that we did that I wanted, that I would normally like make sure I was like snapping or that I was videoing, um, making sure someone else was able to video it for me, like all this stuff that goes into that. And I didn't even think twice about doing any of that because I was just feeling free to have fun and like learn through the process and present. Um, if you guys want me to write a post on nighttime eating and why it's not bad for you, I will, but I did a presentation on that. Um, but yes, so that is that. Another fun thing I realized, I got so many more texts and calls than I ever had before from old friends and current friends about just how I was doing or how they missed me on Instagram and my post and stuff. And it made me realize the people that truly genuinely cared and realized that I wasn't on social media and how much they care to take the time out of their day to contact me directly. And it's just cool because I feel like social media, yeah, it lets us connect with more people than we would normally be able to do in a physical manner. But it also kind of takes away like the intimacy of like calling a friend instead of just seeing their snap story and stuff. And so it was cool to really see like the care that genuine friends had of like calling me and seeing how I was seeing what I had been up to and everything since they couldn't see it on social media anymore. <laughs> One thing I did realize was the fact that as much as I would love to think that I don't seek satisfaction or fulfillment in like the likes or comments I get on a photo, clearly I do somewhat because it was so freeing to just not have to worry about it. Like instead of worrying about, oh, let me go check the post I did two hours ago to see how many comments are on it or whatever. I just didn't have that to think about. And I just started feeling so much, like at first I didn't know where this happiness and like freedom feeling was coming from. And then I quickly realized it was because I wasn't having the stress and anxiety of checking posts and planning posts and just seeing like, did they like it, did they not? Do I need to do something else? Like what should I do that they'll like, appreciate because I really like this post and it meant a lot to me but clearly it doesn't mean a lot to them and like just so much goes on in your mind when you're trying to plan a post because you I mean I do genuinely care what you guys think but also I don't want to care too much to where it makes me change as a person so that was like a really good thing to kind of just discover about myself and realize I need to change as I come back and then honestly guys by week two I was feeling so free from it. Like t 
to my surprise, after using Snapchat every single day for since the last I can remember, the by week two I wasn't even thinking about snapping something or taking a photo for Instagram or writing a blog post or checking another person's blog. Like none of that even came to my mind. Like I was feeling so free. I was like, wow, how quickly it became easier to like not check it. Um, I did check Facebook once every three days just for a five minute time limit just to make sure I didn't miss any important notifications from school groups or work groups. But other than that, I was so free and like didn't even have a desire to go on. The only times I think I had a desire to like go on something was Instagram when it was like a good friend's birthday that I wanted to post about and celebrate with. Um, and Pinterest when I was like trying to find a recipe to make for dinner or something. <laughs> or just at night. A lot of times at night like to fall asleep I scroll through Pinterest feeds. And instead I just sat there, read my Bible and prayed and talked to Jesus. And it was great. It was so, <laughs> I think I had much, like I thought I had to have that to like kind of calm my mind and fall asleep. Um, and I realized I didn't need Pinterest to fall asleep. I could easily fall asleep without it. So just kind of taking and removing those things out of my life and realizing I'm okay without them was really freeing too. So in conclusion, number one, my productivity increased like crazy. I'm talking at home when I was doing work, in school, everything productive because I had no distractions. It was great. Number two, I would go to bed at night and my phone was still at 55%. Like what? That's never happened before. I always had to charge my phone like twice in the middle of the day. Um, so that was nice. Longer battery life, guys, if you go on a social media break. <laughs> and last, but most importantly, um, I had three projects that I've really been wanting to begin and finish. And I have now begun all of them. And there's one that I'm super excited to announce soon enough because it's in the process of getting finished. And so I'm super excited about, well, actually all three of them, but one of them in particular right now because it's been a long time in the works and I finally got moving on it because I had free time and I'm really excited to share with you guys. So just stay tuned to that. But all in all, I want to leave you guys off with the fact that we all desire to be accepted. We all desire to be liked. It's okay. It's human. That's what, like, that's who we are. But social media only amplifies those desires to such a high extent and to an unhealthy level sometimes that it's good to take a break from it all. It's good to take a break from the constant feedback on how you're living, what you're doing, what you're saying. Um, and just do you, like from, like be reminded who you are and who you want to be and do the things you want to do because that's who you are instead of doing things for other people or saying things because that's what you think they want to hear. Um, it's good to be reminded of all that. So until next time, I really recommend this hashtag fresh fit and free from social media. Um, for you guys if you ever want to try it because it was so so good for me no i'm not giving it up for all i'm coming back i am back um but i am number one going to clean and kind of filter my feeds from any negativity um and i'm going to limit the time i'm on social media because it's just been so freeing to not be on it and i don't want to get back to the level i was so that is that tell me if you guys went fresh fit and free from anything um or if you're planning on it and just what you think was the best thing about my break that i just shared with you guys honestly i began enjoying life and doing the things i wanted to do not to take photos or videos of them but just to do them and i simply started enjoying the moment that i was in because of looking up from my phone for once and not looking down so i recommend it Hope you guys enjoyed this little synopsis of my 30 day social media break and how it changed my perspective. Till next time guys, love you all. Can't wait to be back with you guys and sharing everything. If you aren't already, if you aren't already following me on Snapchat, Sarah underscore Grace 11, Instagram at Fresh Fin Healthy, my personal one, Sarah Grace Fan, if you wanna follow my personal one, not anything about health and fitness. 
Um, and my blog, freshandhealthy.com, where there's tons of healthy recipes and nutrition tips and cool things like that. So check it out and love you guys all and see you soon.